My name is Chantelle Valentine Lavore. I was born in Walla Walla, Washington in 1968. I am clairsentient. I am basically five foot two on a tall day. I outweigh most NFL players and professional wrestlers. You can outrun me, but you gotta sleep at some point in time. I was invited here today to discuss um, the use of light as waves and particles as a healing modality in helping people not only heal themselves, heal them, their environment, re-interface with themselves and re-interface um, divine source. Um, my quest for divine source started out in childhood. Um, I think my first uh, realization that I perceived world different, the world differently was that I was able to um, see shadow people, see auras, see uh, different spectrums of light and energy than the people around me. Most of my um, intuitive or psychic impressions were based on... Um, physical concrete stuff that you could take a picture of or make a recording of. Simply because when you deal with grown-ups who have a tendency not to believe what they're seeing, hearing, or experiencing, um, you have to prove things to them. I really didn't have a word for what I was until I was about seven or eight when um, Mr. James Randy was... Uh, taking on Mr. Yuri Geller, and I am entirely in debt to Mr. Randy for the development of my psychic abilities. I will never pass any of his tests that he puts out there, but thank you for being a skeptic. I look at light as a wave to convey energy as a frequency to bring energy down through the nervous system of a person. For instance, I have a clientele that have addiction issues and that they're getting clean or trying to be clean and they will come to me and say, please help me, I don't want to do this anymore. So I go into my modality. Before I became a Reiki master, this is what I would do. I would visualize light going into their chakras, going into their nervous system, integrating into them like rivers flowing into other rivers, then um, creating balls of light and particles, light particles attaching to their neurons that are the receptors for the drugs or chemicals that their brains and nervous systems receive when they shoot up with heroin or take alcohol or smoke their crack or whatever and filling and smoothing those things out so they no longer receive that addictive substance and no longer crave that substance. And to date, I've helped five people 
I'm still in contact with two of those people. And two of those people, as far as I know, have been clean. One has been clean for four years. The other one's been clean since 1997. Okay, the chakra system, I'm going to um, use the Western modality. There are seven major chakras in the body. There's the root chakra, which basically covers um, the elimination area of the body. The second chakra covers the reproductive area. The third chakra covers the solar plexus area. The fourth chakra covers the heart area. The fifth chakra covers the communication or the throat area. The sixth chakra covers the third eye area. And the seventh chakra covers the crown. And so in my modality, when introducing light, and when I call light, I call it big L, as in the highest universal order of light and love, because that is the modality that I work with. I bring it down from my perspective, from height, down from the top, down into the body, like it's a, a larger channel of life into the person's smaller channel of life, and it floods the system so that I am grafting a greater life source into that person's body so that their life source doesn't cut out or fail on them. When substances that are not organic are introduced or if the body is um, impacted by st emotional stress, environmental stress, um, earth changes or what have you, it weakens the, um, the nervous system. And the nervous system is a biochemical electrical system. And in my modality, we thrive off of a gigantic electrical field that is self-aware. All things come from this field, all things return to this field. And when I work in a healing modality, I try to remember that. I also try to remember that everybody's body has its own innate way to heal itself, but sometimes people forget that it can do that. And so they go to try to find someone else to remind them of that, whether it's a doctor in Western medicine or a doctor of Eastern medicine or a spiritualist or an herb doctor or a medicine man or woman. We all try to go to someone to remind us of ourselves and our connection to the divine. From what I understand, the common theme from the world religions that I've studied, and this is um, mainly Western themes, ranging from Persia, Eurasia, Europe, America, um, Eastern Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, um, Christian science, is that disease has been thought to be an error in the way that one perceives oneself or an error in the emotional belief system and the error of one's relationship to deity. This is a, a, a modern thought within the last 200 years. This is because as modern people, and trust me, 
2,000 years ago, the Romans thought that they were modern people. We look at evil as being something that's barbaric and primitive and unenlightened. That any illness can be outthought, outmoded, healed with um, chemicals, healed with material things, healed with logic. And we're beginning to think that in the material world, illness can be healed now with emotional therapies. For those of us who are light workers, with a capital L, who heal with energy, who heal with crystals or what have you, those of us who have always been at the wave outside of the epicenter of religion, the fringe of religion, which is spirituality, maybe the outer fringe of the intelligence of divine mind, God, whatever you want to call it. Healing modality has always been about energy, about how that is interfaced with humanity and how it corrects itself when there's um, an incorrect frequency and how that gets balanced out in harmonics and frequency. It's never really been about particles, it's been more about waves and the frequency of that wave and how things attuneate. But in all the Western religions, the one thing that is in agreement is that we've perceived ourselves to be out of harmony with the one source and that we've always tried to get back into harmony with that one source. And that current metaphysical thought is, is that our frequency or our energy is needing to be adjusted and not our physical, material, particle being, but our light and our energy and our frequency being. All right, so current modalities that one can explore into attuning oneself with light, with a capital L. Chrono or chromium therapy or chromotherapy, which is light therapy, because light radiates in waves. You can use tuning forks. You can use singing bowls. You can use chimes. You can use any form of musical instrument. You can sit next to running water. You can go to the beach because the beach will pound upon the silicone in the sand and naturally raise your frequency. You can go and sit on the grass somewhere in a park or at home during the twilight before dawn or after dusk when the ion levels are up and adjust your frequencies.
prayer is one way to adjust your frequency if you have utterly no money. It is one way to adjust your frequency by just opening yourself and saying, please adjust my frequency to the highest universal order of love and light now. That's all you have to do. Just ask for it and it will be given. That you have to be willing to do that. Even if you're scared spitless, like I generally am, but it is always given. And like I've said before, the light will come for you. And don't be afraid because it knows its own and it will help you. Healing ourselves with intent. We understand that our body by its very nature heals itself with our, without our interference. But sometimes it does need prompting that it's okay to have some downtime. As a rule, if, if we actually get ill, if our immune system actually gets infected with a virus, those things only last 21 days. I find it very interesting that in some religious belief systems that it takes the soul to depart from the body 21 days. So I've always wondered if there was something between those two different systems, healing in the departure of the soul. In order to avoid your body becoming acidic and making yourself open to all sorts of kind of, of infections, um, I recommend running off to your naturopath or your health food store and doing research. There's tons of books out there. You should be able to find that information. But the gist of the argument is, is avoiding things that are sweet because that just sets you up for infection. The other thing is, is to remember to play and have downtime so that you don't stress out your immune system so that it sets you up for being sick. Um, and like I've discussed before, stressful environments, not enough sleep, not enough hydration, pollution, petrochemicals, um, so on. The body does automatically heal itself. One has helped the immune system. One helps the immune system through food, sleep, hydration. One also wants to help the immune system through having a non-toxic environment. One wants to help the immune system by taking care of it by staying away from radiation sources. Basically when you sleep, keep all of your electronics in the other room. Stay at least six feet away from all of your stuff. Anything that has an electrical current running through it, whether it be batteries or plugged into a wall, sends out a radio frequency. That radio frequency is going through your soft tissue and will mess around with your cells. There's plenty of paper on this. You can go online and you can find it. The other thing is the food that you put into your mouth will have pesticide in it. When you eat organic, it has 12% less pesticides on it, fungicides on it, herbicides on it. That 12% is a tipping point. There are people like myself 
out there that that 12% is a tipping point. And there are those of us who need to have that 12% less because if we had that 12%, it would make us sick. There are chemically sensitive people out there. And even though there are companies that say, oh, you can have X, Y, and Z amount in your water, in your soil, in your food. That might be okay for the majority of people, but there are people that are affected. Anyway, the next thing you have to be aware of is light pollution. If you're not sleeping in a totally darkened room, the light that comes in to your room can affect your pituitary gland in your head and can still mess with your sleep cycle. So you need to be able to sleep completely for at least eight hours a day. That is one way that you can heal yourself. You need to have your body as your gear for your soul, completely and healthily running. Intent. When you run light through your body with intent, when all of your systems are up and running and they're firing on all pistons, you should be able to manifest whether it be a healthy body system that is non-conducive to bacteria, non-conducive to viruses, and non-conducive to cancer. When you are running high frequencies of energy and light with a capital L. I cannot speak for anyone else on this planet. I cannot speak for light workers on this planet. I cannot speak for faith healers on this planet. I can only speak for myself. But if you're willing to attuneate yourself to higher frequencies of light and energy, it is very possible to heal your own body with intent. The other things that I can say that I've witnessed is other light workers that have had MS in various stages, that have been in wheelchairs, have been able to channel enough light and energy through themselves and been able to get up and walk around and lead normal lifestyles and give themselves an extension of five to eight years after they started their practice of meditation and channeling light again. So there are things that one can do when one reattuneates to oneself and one's healing modality and reconnecting with divinity. When one has intent to heal oneself and one has intent to manipulate space and time. Miracles and healing is a spontaneous remission of disease with no logical medical explanation up to its disappearance. Metaphysically speaking, miracles happen when everything lines up and is put back into the place where it's supposed to be. The reason why Christianity was so popular in the ancient world is because of miracles. You did not find miracles in the ancient pagan religions. And that is why the slave religion of Christianity became so popular within a hundred years. One moment it was completely abandoned, outlawed, and you could be executed for doing it. 
and within a hundred years you could be completely executed for being a pagan. And it was so popular because of miracles, left and right, people were being healed. Um, healing, from my perspective, is something that you cultivate, that you completely work with on a daily basis. It's like cultivating your mind. It's something that you continuously do. It's like a relationship that you have with your body, that you have with your environment, that you have with deity. It is not something that you take for granted. It is a gift and that is something that you need to have maintained. It's something that you work on because you never know when you turn around that it might not be there. Like every gift, it's to be appreciated. It's always time to take care of yourself. The first thing they teach you in first aid is save yourself. The first thing they teach you in martial arts is to run away. That's the first thing you need to remind yourself in healing, is heal yourself first before you can heal others.